Welcome back. This is the next in my series on writing your own expert advisors for MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5. If you haven't already seen the earlier parts, though, I recommend that you see the earlier videos first. And there is a link in the description for the playlist for this series. This code will be available to download if you want to follow along with the tutorial. There will be a link in the description where you can find the code. At the last video, I added a trailing stop to the expert advisor, and that was a trailing stop based on a fixed points difference from the current price. What I'm gonna do today is very simple. It's more of a beginner level, and this is showing you how to apply a trailing stop that's based on a formula, and the formula that I'm going to use is a simple ATR multiplier. I've chosen this because the formula itself is not too complex, but it does give me an opportunity to show the coding techniques for moving the trailing stop tick by tick, but also recalculating it only on each bar change. This video is going to be for both MetaTrader 4 and 5, so I'll be switching periodically between them when there are differences between the two. Now I'm beginning with the moving average cross from the last video, and I have that here. All I've done is take a copy of that folder, rename it as MA cross with formula TS, and I've just renamed the files inside there, and I've opened all the files and just changed this comment in the header of each. Other than that, these are all the same files that I finished last time. So if you do remember from the last video, I modified, I've got the MQ4 and the MQ5 file, and I modified these to have a single include file, that's this MQH file, because there's a lot of code that's common between the MQ4 and the MQ5 version. So it was much easier for me to put it all in one place and write that once. So having said that, this is a good place to begin with the changes to convert that fixed points trailing stop into an ATR based trailing stop because I'm here in the inputs in the MQH file. And if I scroll down here, I've got this INP trailing stop pips. I'm removing that because that was the distance of the trailing stop from the current price. So I no longer need that line. And I'm going to add lines now to have an ATR calculation. I'm just going to put them here because this is yet another indicator that I'm using. So I'm putting it after the slow moving average. So this is a trailing stop based on ATR. I have an input for the number of ATR bars, which is going to be 10 by default, and another input for an ATR factor. So the way this will work, I will calculate an ATR, which is the 10 period ATR here, and then I simply multiply that value by two or any number that you choose to enter here, and that will give me the distance that I want the trailing stop to be from the current price. And if I scroll down a little, I also had previously this double trailing stop that was when I was using a fixed trailing stop. I'm still going to have a variable to hold this, but I'm going to change the name to ATR value. And that will hold the value of that ATR multiplied by the ATR factor that I have here. So that will be recalculated on each bar. And I think that's it for changes in this header file. Yes, that should do there. So just changing the inputs and this global variable changing to ATR value. Let's go and start with the MQ5 now. I've already changed the include statement, so that's, no, I haven't changed the include statement. I'll do that there and I'll do it here in the MQ4 file before I forget. So back in the MQ5, I have buffers for the fast and the slow moving average. I now need buffers for the ATR values. And these are the same as they are for the moving average. I simply have a handle, which I'm calling ATR handle, that's an int, and a double array that is ATR buffer where I'll capture the values of the ATR. And the next change, this trailing stop equals pips to double INP trailing stop pips. I don't need that now because my trailing stop is going to be based on a calculation. So I'm simply going to use the ATR value and initialize that to zero. So when I first come in here, I'm just setting it to zero and that will wait then until I've had at least one bar tick over and calculate an ATR value. And now also with these handles and buffers that I've declared, I need to actually set up the ATR indicator. So just after this slow handle equals IMA, I'm now going to add a setup for the ATR. The syntax is the same, ATR handle equals, but in this case, the IATR function, and that only has three inputs, the symbol, the time frame, and the number of bars, which is coming from the input. 
and then I'm also using array set as series of that ATR buffer, setting that to true. And the last thing to do here, I'm testing the fast and the slow handles for invalid handle. I need to make sure that I got a valid handle for the ATR as well, so I'm putting in a test for that. So that's just or ATR handle is equal to invalid handle. And then I'll just change the comment. There, just add that or ATR. Those are all the changes in the on init function for MetaTrader 5. But I also need to release that ATR handle. That's just the indicator release ATR handle. And I've said this before, this is probably not essential if you're just loading up the expert advisor, running it until you shut down MetaTrader. But it's a good idea to have this just out of habit because if you do create these handles and stop using them frequently, then you can consume memory. So it's a good idea to release that memory and the system resources every time you finish using an indicator. At that point, before I get to the on tick function, I'll just go to MetaTrader 4 and make the similar changes there. So in the on init function, I also have to replace this trailing stop equals pips to double, and I'm replacing that with the ATR value equals zero. And that's everything in the MetaTrader 4 changes before we get to the on tick function. So I'll stay here. The on tick function is actually different between MetaTrader 4 and 5, and mainly because of the way I get these values from the moving averages. I already had this apply trailing stop statement here. I'm just going to change that so that I only call the apply trailing stop if that ATR value is greater than zero. And remember that I'm setting this to zero the first time through, so it will be zero until I have at least one bar closed. And so I'm calling the apply trailing stop here before I get to the is new bar function, although the ATR value only changes once on each bar. And I'm doing that because the ATR value is actually the distance away from the current price where I want to set the trailing stop. But the current price will be moving tick by tick through the bar. And so while I only change the ATR value once in each bar, it is possible that the actual trailing stop price changes at every tick as the price continues to move. So I'm calling the apply trailing stop here, and I'm only recalculating the ATR value after the is new bar statement. And so let me put that one in now. In MetaTrader 4, then ATR value equals IATR, that's the ATR function, passing in the symbol, the period, the number of bars, and I want the value for bar number one. So I want the value for the bar that's just closed, and I'm multiplying that by the ATR factor. So in the case of the defaults, that's two times the 10 period ATR. And now I'll just go and make these changes in the on tick function in MetaTrader 5 before we actually go and see where those changes apply in the apply trailing stop function. Now in MetaTrader 5, the on tick function, I make the same change here to the apply trailing stop if ATR value is greater than zero. But the way that I retrieve values from indicators is different in MetaTrader 5, so the code for retrieving that ATR value is different here after the is new bar statement. So here I use copy buffer using the ATR handle, buffer number zero, because ATR only has one buffer, that's number zero, beginning at bar zero for two bars, so that will give me bars number zero and one, and I'm copying that into the ATR buffer array. And as I said before, the copy buffer returns the number of values retrieved. I'm trying to get two, so if I don't get two values back, then I'll print this error message. And in this case, where for the Moving averages, I returned if I don't get enough value from the moving averages. For the ATR, I'm just setting the value to zero rather than exit this function. So I print the error message, set the ATR value to zero. Else, so if the case is that I did get enough values back from the copy buffer statement, then the ATR value is just the ATR buffer number one multiplied by that ATR factor. So having done all of that, the only change left is to modify the apply trailing stop function. I'm already in the MQ5 editor, so I'll go and do that first. And the change here is very simple. Previously, I had this trailing stop variable that was just a fixed size. Now all I've done is effectively replace that with the ATR value. And that's all it takes in here to modify this to use that ATR value. In MetaTrader 4, I'll just go over there, I make exactly the same change, just modify this trailing stop 
and replace that with ATR value. And that should be everything. Let me just try. I'm in the MetaTrader 4 editor that I've been doing this. So I'll firstly compile the MQ4 version. That has compiled without error. Let me close this editor and I'll open the MetaTrader 5 editor and compile the MQ5 version. All right, now this is the MetaTrader 5 editor. I have the .mq5 file open. I'll just compile that. And that has also compiled without error. So I'll just run a quick demonstration through so that you can see a trailing stop being created. There really isn't much to show that wasn't already there in the earlier video, but I'll just run it through quickly so you can see a trailing stop created. Now I'm actually running this in the MetaTrader 4 strategy tester. Uh, I've let it run for a minute and I can see that I have a buy trade that's opened and now the price has moved up and this stop loss has appeared. Let me just add in the ATR. Now with the ATR at the bar that's just closed, at bar number one, I can see the ATR value was 0 0.0009. If I just look to see the highest point that this bar has reached, and to the nearest that I can manage to get my cursor, that is approximately two times that at 170 points, that's approximately two times that ATR value. So there's not really much more to show in the demonstration. There's no point in letting this run on any further. I just wanted to show that it does work and does apply that trailing stop. So although this was simple, if you're a beginner in writing code for MQL, this does demonstrate the techniques and it also shows how I structure my expert advisors, how I tend to break up the code between what happens every tick and what only happens every bar. So a short video, but I hope you found it useful. If you did, please click the like button. And if you want to see more of our videos, click subscribe and then click the bell icon to be notified when we release new videos. Thank you for watching.